What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet, and Anthem did an oopsie, DOA6 did an oopsie doopsie, I, yes, I'm going to steal that shtick from PewDiePie now, because I'm not a creative person. This is my weekly gaming news roundup in which I take a bunch of the smaller stories that I feel are not worth a good 5-10 minute video and put them into just, you know, little individual segments here. I, I know other YouTubers would make a full 10 minute video out of it, and they, why don't I do that? Because I do like money, I should do that. Ah, let's just do it this way. I always struggle with what to call this series, so do me a favor, let me know in the comment section below, what would you like me to call this series? So whenever you see the thumbnail, you, you know it's going to be one of these news roundups in which I talk about several different topics. So let's start off talking about Anthem, because Anthem is having a tremendously difficult time of it, including right now, rumors going around that Anthem has a chance to brick your console just by playing the game. Now, if you're playing this on PC, or if you're playing it on the Xbox One, you are going to see a few crashes every once in a while, especially when people are shutting down the game or during loading screens. And since loading screens is about 98% of the gameplay, then uh, yeah, you're going you're gonna to see these crashes occasionally. But unfortunately, if you are playing on the PlayStation 4, those crashes have a chance of causing your system to do a hard reset, which is dangerous for the console. And in some rare cases, instead of just causing a hard reset, it actually causes the system to lock up entirely. Now, if you do get one of these lockups, uh, you've got a lot of work to do. You've got to turn off the console, hold down the power button, connect your DualShock 4 controller using a USB cable. Then you have to rebuild the database. I mean, this is dangerous for this system altogether. And this situation is so bad, we're actually at a point where we're seeing Sony do something that Sony does not like to do. They are giving people refunds for their games. I can't actually believe it. So if you bought Anthem on PS4 and you've experienced these crashes, uh, apparently, according to some Reddit users, you can apply for a refund and Sony will probably give it to you. So this is obviously very embarrassing for BioWare and for EA. Um, Anthem has definitely not had a good start, and this kind of thing is exceptionally bad. How did they code a game and release a game without playtesting it on the PlayStation 4? Were they aware that these bugs were going to exist? Did they just not care? Why would... I, I honestly... How, how do they not fix this? It comes across as incompetent. I hope that it's not incompetence, but it looks like incompetence. So EA has responded by saying that they are aware of the situation, and they're not sure how widespread the issue is just yet. EA Help tweeted out, We are aware of a crashing issue some of you have been reporting for Anthem Game. We're investigating and ask that you share your crash data reports when prompted. If you have, we'll be reaching out to gather info. If not, please reply to this thread on AHQ. Which that seems disingenuous and a little weird to me, honestly, why you're even gathering data at that point. You have PlayStation 4s available in your offices, in your testing areas, and you guys obviously, hopefully, are paying for testers, so it should be fairly easy to reproduce these issues. I mean, gathering data is not a bad thing to do in a situation, but you guys should have been aware of this problem. You should have already been patching and working on this problem. I mean, if, if not, that is, once again, just pure incompetence. And this is such a bad look for EA and for Bioware and for the game itself. I actually thought at first maybe this is one of those overblown, over-exaggerated situations, but no, it actually happened to somebody I consider a friend. Just last night, Game Over Greggy, Greg Miller, actually tweeted out that he got anthemed uh, while playing the game, had the system reboot on him. And I trust Greg pretty explicitly, so if it happened to him, it can happen to anybody. Now look, this kind of thing has definitely happened before, though not recently. In PC gaming, you see this stuff all the time, with a virus located on a CD-ROM, or a, a root kit included on a CD-ROM, or, or even sometimes uninstall programs that would accidentally uninstall everything on your hard drive instead of just the game. But you don't see this stuff that often on consoles, and I think it's the only time we've seen it this generation, and it's very alarming. I hate to see this happening to the folks over there at Bioware, because this is the kind of thing... This kind of rumor can ruin careers. It, it really can. And I say rumor, but it's not a rumor. I mean, this is clearly happening. Even EA has said that it's happening. So the good news here is if you bought Anthem on a PlayStation and you do want to get your money back, you're bored with the game already, you feel like there's not enough there, you're tired of the loading times, it's an opportunity to get your money back, potentially. And if you're successful in doing so, let me know in the comments section below. And if you want to keep playing Anthem on your PlayStation 4 and you haven't had any crashes, I'd like to hear that too. I'd like to hear some good stuff about that game. 
So here's an interesting story, and it might get a little political here. You may not agree with what I have to say here, but I hope that you bear with me and listen anyway. Are you guys familiar with a company by the name of THQ Nordic? Uh, they make the Darksiders series. Most recently, Darksiders 3 is the last game they published. They decided to do an Ask Me Anything, which I've done here on this channel before. I've done them on Reddit. Uh, Reddit is the most common place to do one of these Ask Me Anythings, these AMAs. They decided to do one in a much more controversial place, though. If I told you they decided to do an AMA on 4chan, you would probably lose your mind because that just sounds like political suicide in 2019, doesn't it? But nope, they went worse than 4chan. They went to the uh, spinoff site, 8chan, which is fundamentally worse than 4chan. It is 4chan without the rules. Back when we started seeing rules enforcement actually showing up in 4chan back in the day, a bunch of people decided they wanted a much more a liberal board, one that could say and do whatever they wanted to do. So they decided to create 8chan, and to this day, they don't enforce a lot of rules over there. You can find just about anything. Just whatever you are imagining right now, you can probably find it on 8chan. In fact, 8chan is so toxic, it has actually been at points delisted from search engines for harmful content. Harmful content against minors. So... Not a good look. But on February 26th, they decided that this would be a good opportunity for them for some reason, uh, linking to the board and linking to the thread and saying the opportunity was here and we took it. We got approached in a very friendly and polite manner and were assured said person, shout out to Mark, will take care of the nasty stuff. So here we are. Now, of course, the industry completely lost their minds. You saw pretty much uh, company heads and game developers and gamers alike all saying that this was a horribly stupid and disastrous idea that would only end in blood, sweat, and tears. And of, and of course, they walked this back. They walked this back minutes later. And I don't even want to read this out because of what YouTube will do to it in the algorithm, but read this for yourself. Uh, I personally agree to this AMA without doing my proper due diligence to understand the history and the controversy of the site. I do not condone mm-hmm and mm-hmm and mm-hmm in any shape or form. Good Lord. And look, I, I hate outrage culture just as much as the next guy, but I personally here see this as just a stupid, stupid move. Even if you had just done a basic Google search to see what that message board was all about, you would know that this kind of thing would not fly in 2019. In fact, it seems purposeful. It seems like they knew what they were doing. They knew the internet would talk about it and it would bring them some sort of brand awareness, though why you would want that kind of brand awareness, I have no idea. Well, I hope this is not the case, it comes across as being the opposite of what people call wokeonomics. You know, when like Pepsi did that Kylie Jenner ad and, and tried to sell you sugar water by appearing to be very far on the left, right? Uh, it seems like that they're doing the exact same thing by trying to align themselves with that kind of thing and those kinds of people. Maybe trying to come across as edgy and young and hip and boy, it did not work here. I mean, we do live in a time where Wendy's entire brand on social media has nothing to do with how good their food is, just about how big of an asshole they can be to McDonald's at this point. And maybe this is THQ Nordic's attempt at doing something like that, trying to get those types of people to buy their games or get negative attention and try to turn it into positive attention. I don't really know. Here's what I do know. It failed utterly. And of course it was going to fail. That is... That it's a stupid decision in 2019. And I'm not saying that you should, you know, bow to everybody that ever says you're doing something wrong or doing something bad. But choosing to ally yourself with that particular board just seems doomed to failure. I mean, I guess I do love free speech. And I do support THQ Nordic's decision to do this. If they wanted to do that, go right ahead. It's your choice. You have the choice to align your game and your company with that kind of thing. It's just not going to be successful. And then finally, I want to talk about the latest entry in the Dead or Alive series, uh, Dead or Alive 6, which is off to a very bad and rocky start. The reviews are coming in and the game has been out for a few days. It's currently got a 74 at Metacritic based on 48 reviews with a user score of about a 5.5. And this game has been controversial since it was announced, probably not for the reason you think. For the DOA series has always had very sexualized male and female characters, with lots of sexy outfits and swimsuits and things along that line. It's always appealed to its uh, audience by, by making that kind of thing as part of the game. And because of that, as you can imagine, with modern day politics, a lot of journalists were pretty down on that kind of thing because they don't want to see sexualized female characters. They don't mind seeing sexualized male characters, but they don't like sexualized female characters. And the folks making DOA 6 knew that that could hurt their game. Specifically, they knew that a lot of fighting game tournaments would not allow people to play their games at those tournaments because of the sexualized nature of the characters. 
So the choice was made during development to desexualize the characters and make the outfits less skimpy to avoid that kind of controversy, and that created another controversy all on its own because a lot of players who purchased the series want that kind of thing in the game, and they rely on it, and unfortunately, they chose to remove it from the game. So obviously at that point, the developers would realize the quality of the game has to come first, the value of the game has to come first, and, and that's what they should be focusing on. But nope, they have a $93 season pass, and it's only the first of several season passes planned. 93 bucks. You're definitely not getting your value out of this game. And this is a real shame, because when you look at the Steam reviews, most people tend to say the same thing, that this is a stripped-down, bare-bones fighter that has been primed for monetization, that they have definitely not given you your value here for the game and expect to monetize it to the handful of people that have chosen to stick with them. They say the base game is frustrating and slow to unlock stuff, the character roster is fairly small, and there's only two DLC characters planned in the first season. Of those two DLC characters, some of them have been pulled out of previous games to be sold back to you, and the swimsuits and the outfits that are available through the base game are all kind of boring and mostly just color swaps. Here it is, the $92.99 season pass, and it's going to include two characters, and it's going to include a bunch of costumes. Here's 13, 26, 64, all of the costumes that could have been in the base game for your original $60 instead are getting sold back to you at 92 bucks. So yeah, $62 for the game, 92 bucks for the season pass. It's more expensive than the base game itself. So I guess it does make sense it's loaded with content because it, it better be. It better be. Now, if you are a DOA fan, you're going to realize that this is not that uncommon. They have always monetized their games. In fact, take a look at all the DLC that's available for DOA 5. Look at all of this DLC, including about six different characters, but mostly costumes you can get. And if you choose to purchase all of that DLC, you would spend $1,289 to get all of the costumes in that game. So I guess if you're a DOA fan, you are used to this practice and you knew what you were getting into, but it would have been so refreshing, along with the design change, to take out the jiggle physics and all of that other stuff, if they had also decided to monetize the game less aggressively and give you more content and more stuff to do. But because of all of these poor decisions, it looks like this game might be an utter failure at this point. According to Steam Charts, uh, the game is not very popular, only having 785 people playing the game as of the time of this recording, with an all-time peak of only 2,000 people playing the game on Steam at the same time. And now, I know a lot of players prefer to play their fighting games on console, but this does show that it's definitely not selling very well, at least on PC. It's so frustrating because Dead or Alive is one of the very first modern fighting games I played on an Xbox 360. I really, really enjoyed Dead or Alive then, and I still enjoy it now. Uh, jiggle physics and all, and I even like the volleyball games, if I'm being honest with you. But had this game chosen to focus on the core fighting mechanics and give you a lot of content and a lot of game modes and a lot of stuff to do, I think I would have enjoyed the game a lot more. But due to all the controversies and due to the design decisions and the fact that the game is just more of the same and not better and not improved on and isn't a robust value, I just don't really feel the need to play it. Especially with a $92 season pass. And that's just one of several season passes to purchase. If you want all the content, if you want all the characters, you're probably looking at spending hundreds more, maybe even thousands like DOA 5. But you know, that's just one man's opinion. I could be wrong, and I know if I am wrong, you're gonna let me know in the comments section below. Let me know what you thought about these stories or any other stories going on right now. Let me know what you think I should name these gaming news wrap-ups. Normally they're sponsored. I didn't have a sponsor for today. Maybe we'll have another sponsor up in the future as well. And for those of you who watch these roundups and set through the sponsors and interact with the sponsors, I really do appreciate it. I might put a sponsored link in the comment section below, maybe for my friends over at Glasses USA. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon.